Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. I uh, hope you had a great night. I uh, hope you're excited about a brand new day today. Come on, somebody. Brand new day. His mercies are brand new. His grace is waiting for you. His love, his arms are just open wide. That's what we get every single morning with God, our Father. And I pray that you know him like that. I pray that you know the loving Father that he is. Um, not just all of the other titles that come with him in the Word. It's so encouraging to me that... Um, that of all the titles that God could be, that him at the very core base nature of who he is, he's just a father who loves loving on his kids. And so I hope you feel that embrace and that love from him uh, this morning. Do you want to take a moment and say hey to everybody? And, uh, you know, jump in the comments and uh, let us know you're here. Uh, let us know how God's been speaking to you. Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear that. And if you need prayer, um, if you do need prayer, um, you can, of course, you can drop something in the comments there if you wanted to. You can send us a private message on social media. Um, or you can go to freedomdtx.com slash prayer, and you can submit a prayer request right there. Uh, the way we deal with prayer requests is um, if you want us to share that with our intercessory team, we'll do that. But you can tell us right there whether you want to or not. And if you want us to follow up with you and give you a call or, or a text or reach out to you, uh, we'd be happy to do that as well if you want to. I just want you to know that you're not alone and that there are people uh, in your life right now at Freedom Church who are more than willing to pray with you and to intercede for you and to war on your behalf in the Spirit and to, uh, to do what we can to help you become uh, everything God's called you to be and to win the war that's, that, that you're fighting right now uh, in your life. Um, so, hey, we are almost done with this thing. We have today and then what, three more days left. It's, uh, so we're cooking right along here. Um, today we are in day 18. Uh, January 26th, day 18, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's take a minute and talk about that because what we're talking about specifically today is putting on the armor of God and rebuking Satan's attacks. Now, here is here is something that I think is um, important that we talk about when it comes to the enemy that we're fighting. Um, and it's funny because a lot of times we don't see the enemy like what I'm about to say, but but he is already defeated. I don't know if you know this, but he is already defeated. Um, it's not like he's just getting to do what he wants to do for a while, and he's still in the battle, and he's still vying for the championship. He's already defeated. Already. And, and what is interesting to me is how aggressively the enemy attacks us and how much he sends his little minions to thwart us and to, to disrupt what God's doing in our lives. And I know you think that he just wants to kill you, but what he really wants to do, what Satan's main goal is simply this, to separate you from the love of your father. That's it. He wants to separate you from your father. He wants to create distance between you and your father. And he's been doing that since the very beginning. I mean, that's the very first thing that Satan did when he popped on earth was went right up to Eve and said, did God really say he, he, he wants to put distrust between you and the father so that you can't embrace God as Father, and there's that broken relationship. Because he knows, he knows that if you just see God for who he really is, a loving Father who wants to pour out his love on you, to commune with you, he knows that, that not only has he already defeated, but that he can't make an impact on you like he wants to. Satan wants to jack you up. He wants to separate you. He wants to create enmity between you and the Father. But he is defeated already. He is a defeated foe. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. I think the most important word in that passage of scripture is the word like. He's like a roaring lion. He's like one. You, you know, lions, I don't know if you've ever heard a lion in the wild, but they're kind of scary. Like I've never been, I mean, I've been in a zoo and I've heard a, a lion roar, but let me tell you, watch a video of somebody being out in the bush in Africa somewhere and a lion roars. It is, it is like bone tingling, intimidating. And that's how Satan does with us. He, he walks around and he creates noise that creates fear in our hearts. And with that fear, he manipulates us into distrusting our father in heaven. But he is like a roaring lion. He is not a lion. He's not a roaring lion. There's only one lion, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come on, baby. That's Jesus Christ. 
He's the only lion. Satan is like a lion. He is he is trying to to replicate what he sees God doing, but in a way that creates fear instead of creating love, which is what the Father is doing, what the real lion of the tribe of Judah is doing. Satan is like a lion. So, so number one, right out of the bag, we need to understand that he's defeated and that he's going to use fear and intimidation to try to, to create enmity between uh, between us and our Father. Okay, Here's what the Bible says, though, in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hey, I want you to understand, that doesn't say defeat the devil. That doesn't say... Um, say the right combination of prayers to unlock the devil fleeing from you. All you have to do is resist. You don't even have to. You don't even have to fight. You just have to resist. How, how do we resist? That's another one of those how tos. How do you resist the devil? Well, the moment Satan comes at you and tempts you, you spit back the word at him. That's what Jesus did. You you send the word back to him. Okay. So you, if he if he comes to you and says, you know what, with the market the way it is and and um, you know, Keystone being canceled, you know, you work in the oil field, you know, you're next. See, that's fear that the enemy wants to spout off at you. But what is that verse in Hebrews that we that we hit um, a few weeks back on Sunday that said that both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified have one source. That's the Father. So when the enemy comes against me, okay, how do I resist him? I simply say this. I'm not worried about money. I'm not worried about the job. I'm in covenant relationship with God with my finances. I'm tithing, I'm giving, and he promises that he rebukes the devourer for my sake. The devourer, Satan, that's you. You're getting rebuked already from God the Father because I'm in covenant with God. And so that tells me that, number one, that my job is not my source, all right? But God is my source. And if God is my source, it doesn't matter what Satan tries to do. He's like a lion, not a lion. He's seeking to devour, but he can't devour me. I'm a child of the living God. And I don't have to worry about it. Now, does that mean that we are are just silly and do whatever we want? You know, because remember, First Peter five eight says, "Be so reminded, be watchful." And then James four and seven says, "Submit yourselves therefore to God." So, so yes, you do have a part to play in this. You submit yourself to the Lord. Okay, you don't you don't walk up to the devil with some arrogant mind say, "You day you little sucker." No, no, you you submit to the Lord and let the Lord fight your battle. You just resist the devil. Okay. So we have to first, I think first thing in this whole process of the spiritual armor and then rebuking Satan's attacks is number one, just realize who Satan is, like what his, what his status actually is. He's defeated. He is a defeated enemy. Okay. So let me lovingly say, stop giving Satan so much credit. Okay. And let him be who he is, which is a defeated enemy. All right. So that's the first part of it. But let's start. That's the rebuke Satan part of it. Let's talk about the armor of God because I love the armor of God. Several years back, I was looking through the armor of God. And of course, I don't. if you don't know what the armor of God is, let me just go through it. It's the helmet of salvation. It's the breastplate of righteousness. Our loins are girt about with truth. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have the shield of faith where we can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay. That is traditionally what I've heard as the Lord's Prayer. And it's it's incredible. It's like it's it's amazing that God provides us with, with armor for protection. Um and so here's what's interesting though, what I what I kind of saw about this several years back was every single thing that we're asked to put on when it comes to the armor is actually just another name for Jesus. Okay, so let's think about it. The helmet of salvation. He is our salvation, okay? He died on the cross for our salvation. We are saved because of Jesus. But but why why for the helmet? Why is it so important that the helmet is salvation? I don't know if you know, but the battle in your life goes on between these two things right here. Between your ears, there is a battle that rages. And the place where you need to know salvation more than anywhere is where that battle is. He saves us in the midst of that battle. He saves us from the battle against sin. He saves us from the battle of our mind. That's where the salvation happens. What about the breastplate of righteousness? Well, our heart is where our is where the breastplate is. And, and our heart needs to be righteous. Our heart needs to be pure. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So his righteousness applies to our heart. The, the, the thing that pumps the blood, which the life is in the blood, into the very core of our being. Righteousness reigns there. What about our loins? Well, 
I mean, not to get too crazy, but what happens with our loins? We reproduce with our loins. That's what we reproduce. So, so he, we apply the truth of who God is and we reproduce that as we go along our lives. We, we are reaping. He is the truth. He is the way, the truth and the life. So we reproduce that truth. What about our feet? He's the Prince of Peace. Not only is Jesus the Prince of Peace, he is the King of Peace. You remember back when Abraham met with the King of Salem, Melchizedek? All right, he was the King of Salem. That's the King of Peace. Well, who was Abraham meeting with? You're right. It was Jesus. So when he died on the cross and he's been crowned King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he went from being a prince, baby, come on to the King of Peace. So wherever we walk, wherever our foot touches, we are bringing peace into that situation because of the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace, is in our lives. He's on our feet. So wherever we walk, peace lives. What about the shield of faith? Well, doesn't our faith start and stop with Jesus? Didn't he, it wasn't he the author and he'll be the finisher of our faith. And so whenever Satan's coming against us, what do we push back with? We push back with our faith. Our faith in God is what starts, stops the fiery darts of the enemy. And lastly, the sword of the spirit. Come on, man. Let's go to John one with that. In the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among men. I mean, Jesus Christ is the word. He is the sword. He is the living God. He's what we attack the enemy with. And by the way, the only, the only offensive weapon God has given us in the armor of God is the sword of the spirit. So listen, happy thoughts aren't going to fix whatever's going on between your ears. Okay. Just thinking happy thoughts or going to your happy place or taking a trip to Cancun. None of that's going to fix the problem. What fixes the enemy's attacks, what, if, what fixes the, the stuff that's coming in is when you fight back with the word of God. This is why it's so important that you read the Bible, that you dig in, that you pray, that you, you, you press in. Why? Because the sword of the spirit is how you fight against those things. Okay. Sword of the spirit. Now, those are six things. And, and a, a while back uh, I was looking and if you, if you ever search on Google for, um, for the armor of God, you will find that there are seven things, but I'm like, well, where's the seventh one? You know, I was like, where's the seventh one? I, I don't understand. Read Ephesians chapter six, which is where this talk about the armor of God comes from, but read verse 18 and it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Did you know that at least according to Ephesians chapter 6, that prayer is just as powerful a weapon as anything else? It, it's a part of your armor. It's a part of your defense system. So I, I ask people all the time to read their word. I ask people all the time to pray. Why am I asking you that? Um, well, number one, because the sword of the Spirit is the way you aggressively attack the enemy how you resist him but prayer is the thing prayer is the thing that helps create oh, I know it's weird to say it like this but like a force field around you prayer what prayer does in the midst of your battle is prayer activates the heavens to war on your behalf prayer prayer moves God and when you when you mix prayer and faith, and righteousness, and salvation, and truth, and peace, you mix all of that stuff together, what you get is you get heaven's armies fighting the enemy on your behalf, okay? I don't know where you are in your life right now in terms of how you perceive Satan is attacking you, um, how evil is coming against you. So, you know, sometimes we get in these, these moments where we feel like, man, we're high on the mountain, everything's great. But then there are these times where it's like, however many angels fell from heaven on that fateful day, that all of those guys are coming against us right now. Like, that's how it feels sometimes. But I want you to know something. Satan is defeated. And God has given you armor to be able to stop those little darts he throws at you. He's giving you a sword to be able to attack back and resist the devil. But then he invites you to pray. Pray in the spirit on all occasions, with all kind of prayers and requests. All kinds, that means the big kinds. And that means the little kinds. And that means everything in between. Do you want heaven fighting for you? Pray. That's how it happens. 
What I want you to do in this moment, we're going to pray right now. And whatever whatever you're facing, like whatever struggle is going on right now, whatever, there's a, I know there's a battle that's raging right now um, in, in some of you and maybe, maybe a lot of you, but whatever's going on, I, I would invite you to stop trying to man up or woman up and just fight it yourself and, and all that. And just take take the word of God for for what it says. Like, believe what it says. That I don't have to defeat Satan. He's already defeated. All I have to do is resist him. The way I resist him is with the word of God. So pop on Google and whatever you're dealing with, if you're struggling with depression or with with frustration or whatever it is, what does the Bible say about? And then put that word. And then openbible.info is typically the first one that pops up. And you can read all these Bible verses that have to deal with exactly what you're dealing with. That's how you fight back. That's the sword of the spirit in action. And then lastly, pray. Tell God what's on your heart. Tell him what you're struggling with. Ask for the armies of heaven to be unleashed to silence that stinking enemy that's just roaring like a lion. All right, let's take a moment and pray. Father, we come before you right now, and I thank you so much, God, that like it's amazing, it's amazing how much you do for us. It's amazing how for us you really are. And and God, even to the point of when the enemy is coming against us, attacking us, God, when the enemy comes in like a flood, your word says that you will raise up a standard, God that you raise up a standard to block the attack. God, that, that just like I'm thinking of Elisha's servant right now, that he was scared to death about the armies that were surrounding him. But God, I pray that you would open our eyes to heaven's armies that are surrounding us and protecting us and keeping us safe. God, I thank you that the enemy is defeated. He is a defeated enemy. And God, I'm asking you right now to forgive me when I've given Satan more credit than he's due. I've asked you to forgive me when I have, when I have given in to the intimidation and fear that comes comes from his roaring and not resisted him like I should. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to help me. I want to do what James 4, 7 says. I want to do what 1 Peter 5, 8 says. I want to do those things. But Holy Spirit, I need you to help. There are too often, too many times when I succumb to the sound of the roaring or I look and see the attack and I become afraid. Or I look and see what's going on around me and I become intimidated. But God, I'm asking you to help me. Help me resist the devil. So God, right now, to, to close off this prayer, Father, we just right now, we, we put on the armor of God. We put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. Our loins are girt about with truth. Our feet are shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. We have the shield of faith where we can quench the fire darts of Satan. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And God, we have prayer. We have prayer that we can fight against the enemy. God, we clothe ourselves right now in Jesus Christ today and every day. Father, we thank you for it. Thank you for this armor. Thank you for the protect, protection that you provide. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We love you so much, Father. And so your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Hey, I appreciate the comments. Um, yeah, John, prayers at avail much. That's a great, great book. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really good one. If you need help learning how to war in the spirit and pray and all that kind of stuff in March, we're doing a series called how, and we're actually going to talk about that because that's, you know, that's something that that's something you need to know, something you need to learn how to do. But, um, um, whatever you do today, just spend some time praying, honor God, give him that time, um, pray often, pray well, he's listening. He wants to speak to you. And I'm going to tell you right now, whatever attack you're facing, I want you to know something. The enemy is defeated. He's defeated. I said it a bunch of times in this live. I'm going to say it one more time. Satan is defeated. So let's act like it. Let's act like it. Let's live that. All right. Let's allow God to do what God does. We'll do our part. God does his part and Satan's still defeated. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. We'll catch you tomorrow.